All set, Jamie? Well, good morning, everyone, and it is a great morning, and I'm thrilled to be here today alongside Mayor Chow to announce that Toronto and Ontario have reached a historic New Deal. A new deal that puts the city on the path to long-term financial sustainability through growth. Before I get into details, I want to thank the many public officials, both from the province and the city, who helped make this deal reality. Starting with my great Secretary of Cabinet, Michelle D. Emanuel, and amazing person, uh, Paul Johnson, Toronto CAO, and Greg Runchuk, Deputy Minister of Finance, and the Finance Minister, uh, Peter Bethenfalvey, which is doing a great job. I also want to thank, th these are two important people, the, both myself and the Mayor, uh, my Chief of Staff, Patrick Sackville, and the Mayor's Chief of Staff, Michael Hay. You know, people don't realize how hard they work. They've worked all weekend, all night. We were up late last night. And I, I just want to thank them for their long hours of work uh, to make this deal possible. I want to thank Chief Laform for his ongoing partnership. And a couple special thank yous uh, to both uh, Councillors Shelley Carroll, Budget Chief, and Paul Ainsley, my former seatmate for four years. And I can assure you, when you sit beside someone for four years, you get to know each other, you get to know each other's family. And I just want to thank uh, them for their support, for the Mayor and I, and their guidance to the both of us. And of course, I want to thank the Mayor for her commitment and dedication to getting this deal done. It's amazing to see what we can accomplish when we work together, when we put our differences aside and focus on what unites us. So, Mayor, thank you so much. Friends, after weeks of productive discussions, we've agreed to a game-changing historic new deal. The deal will provide the city with up to $1.2 billion in new operating supports over the next three years. This includes money to fund new homeless shelters and beds, to get more police officers patrolling the TTC to keep it safe, and to help bring the Finch West and Eglinton Crosstown projects online. The province is also providing the city with up to $7.6 billion in additional capital relief by uploading the Gardner Expressway and the Don Valley Parkway. These two highways, they move over 300,000 vehicles every single day. In fact, the DVP is the only expressway connecting the north and south ends of the city. These two highways are vital to the success of the province's economy. This deal will ensure that these critical transportation assets remain in good condition and keep people and goods moving for generations to come. And let me be clear, this government will never ever toll these highways. Now more than ever, drivers here in Toronto and across the GTA need relief, not more cost. This new deal will also deliver on our commitment to build more housing, and I'm thrilled that Toronto has agreed to meet or exceed its target to build more than 73,000 new homes by 2025, including by building way more density close to transit. Not only will this help bring the dream of home ownership into reach for more people, it will put the city on a path to receive hundreds of millions of dollars in funding through our Building Faster Fund. We're going to work together over the coming weeks and months to find surplus government lands where we can quickly build affordable and attainable homes, including modular homes. And friends, as part of this new deal, the city has accepted the province's authority to advance approvals for Ontario Place. Later today, our government will introduce new legislation for this new deal that will support a growing Toronto help solve the city's deep financial challenges and move forward important priorities like building homes, transit, and critical infrastructure. Friends, we're working together to put, put Toronto on the path to success, not by painful cuts in services or new taxes and tolls, but through smart, effective growth. Growth in services, growth in transit, growth in density and types of housing, growth in infrastructure, 
and growth in revenues. And while Ontario and Toronto have come to this historic agreement, we still need the feds at the table. We're again calling on the federal government to step up as a full partner and provide their fair share of funding for things like shelter supports and transportation infrastructure. Toronto is too important to Ontario and Canada's economy. We need all levels of government working together to ensure this world-class city, Canada's largest city, remains financially sustainable. When Toronto succeeds, Ontario succeeds. When Ontario succeeds, Canada succeeds. Thank you all for joining us and may God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to Mayor Chow for her comments. Thank you. Thank you. I live a few blocks from a food bank on College Street. Every day I see people in line, seniors, families, kids, all waiting for the food bank to open. And every month the line seems longer. In Toronto, one in 10 people use food banks and a third of them are kids. Kids that need to fill up their bellies. Kids that can't learn if they're hungry going to school. Families are stuck making the impossible decision in either paying rent or feeding their kids. And we do know 85,000 Toronto households are on a waiting list for a long time for some kind of affordable housing. So many Torontonians are facing difficult times, especially those that are sleeping on the street, even tonight. We got here because we have decades of underinvestments from different levels of government. We inherited a bit of a financial mess in Toronto. And for a long time, it's hard to find hope until today. And I want to thank the Premier for partnering with Toronto. I want to thank the Premier for providing this new deal so that we can provide some hope for some of the families that are having a hard time to get by. I'm encouraged by this new deal. It unlocks the city potential it provides billions in capital and operating dollars so we can do more for people. By uploading the Garner and the DVP, the city will be able to spend billions more on affordable housing, fixing transit, and building communities with all the things we love in the neighborhoods, whether it's community centers, libraries, parks, and all those things where people gathered and where they feel they belong. This means, <clears throat> this deal means that we can do more for people. It means we can realize the potential of our housing plan, our ambitious housing plan. Thousands of affordable units can be built by redirecting funds that could otherwise be spent on repairing and aging highways. It means that we can repair our aging transit system and improve the services so people can get to work and school on time. We can fix our roads instead of spending a huge portion of our budget on fixing the gardener. This is a structural change that will unlock billions over the next 10 years. But of course, it doesn't take us all the way there. That's why I'm very thankful the province and the city have agreed to continue this conversation. Over the next few years, we'll continue to examine the city's finances and working on Toronto's long-term financial sustainability. It's the beginning of a journey. It's a wonderful first step. And of course, we need the federal government to step up and join us. We have identified areas where the federal government can join us, like leveraging the provincial's commitment to split the cost of the new subway cars on Bloor Street. We need that now. We, if we can secure a third of the federal dollars, whether it's on shelters, on housing, and on the subway cars, we can 
uh, on the cars, we can put in the order immediately. When all levels of government work together, there's so much more we can do for the people of Toronto. It's a partnership. It is a collaboration because we know we are stronger together. I look forward to continue the discussion so that together we can build a city that's more affordable, caring, and safe for everyone. Again, I want to thank the Premier for this wonderful partnership for this new deal. Some of you may have questions. Thank Thanks, ma'am. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll now go to reporters' questions. If reporters could please identify themselves by name and outlet, it'll be one question and one follow-up. First question. It's Richard Southern with City News 680. Uh, Mayor Chow, you've repeatedly spoken out against the Premier's plan to redevelop Ontario Place. Why then seek control of it today? Well, my position is clear in Ontario Place. I've said so before. I'll say so again. Uh, it has been my position that I believe that Ontario Place be a public park, um, but it is called Ontario Place. It is, the land belongs to the provincial government, and um, we do not have uh, the authority to stop the development. And um, the future of Ontario Place is going to, that debate is going to happen here in Queen's Park, not at the municipal level. And um, if you want, I have uh, our um, city manager, Paul Johnson, have a letter specifically regarding what the city can or cannot do. And it's very clear that uh, we do not have the ability. It, is, it belongs to the Ontario government. And there are two other elements on this uh, in the term sheet, as you might have seen. Number one is that the possibility that we could move the parking lot to the X place, which is uh, uh, something that uh, we will negotiate, because it would open up more public space to the, on the waterfront. The second piece of it is the Science Centre. The Science Centre uh, will now, um, again, with partnership between the, the provincial and the municipal government, we will have for the local communities and other Torontonians a science-based um, program, community program, um, for the, on the legacy um, Science Centre at that spot, which will absolutely benefit, uh, especially the local um, residents. Pre Premier Ford, critics are quick to point out the ha near half billion you're set to spend on this underground parking garage. Will you listen to that suggestion from Mayor Chow and simply move the spa across the street to the CNE where there's lots of parking? Will, will you save taxpayers well, that you, money you, that way? Well, th thanks for that, Richard. And let, let's just put this in a perspective. Ontario Place, out of this whole deal, is about that big. And the whole deal is about that big. We're talking about expanding uh, or uploading the Gardner and, and the DVP. That's going to, over a uh, long-term uh, you know, process, it's going to save the city billions of dollars of uh, infrastructure. I remember dealing this when I, I was down there with Rob. Uh, this, this massive piece of infrastructure that gets utilized by not just people in Toronto, uh, all, all around Ontario, but outside of Toronto, uh, transporting goods and services across the city, and not to mention uh, funding uh, more police officers to make sure the TTC is, is uh, safe when people use it. Uh, building homes and shelters and housing for, for people. That's what's so important about this deal, and we're going to focus on uh, working with the, the city and working with the mayor and having a collaborative uh, relationship, and uh, so far we've had an incredible relationship, and I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for the approach that the mayor has taken. But this, this is a massive, massive deal to take the burden off the, the people and the taxpayers of, of Toronto. 
Uh, hey, Premier, it's uh, Aiden Schmandy from the Trillium here. Uh, so a number of other cities across the province are you know, saying they're broke, so I imagine they're looking at this deal that uh, you've announced today kind of longingly, wondering if they could uh, have, have something similar. So I'm wondering if you are open to replicating this process with other cities across the province. Well, ever since we've been elected, we've worked with all 444 municipalities across the province. Uh, they've received funding uh, greater than any other provincial government's ever given them. And we look forward to uh, always working collaboratively with all cities. But let's look at the City of Toronto. The City of Toronto is unique, unlike any other city in Canada. They're the only city in, in Ontario that has a subway system that moves millions and millions of people and that we're doubling uh, with the cooperation, collaboration with the city and the federal government. Uh, it's the largest transit project in, in North America that are going to be moving uh, people um, every single day, 365 uh, days a year. So if you look at Toronto alone and, and the surrounding area of Toronto, they represent 50% of our GDP. There are 460 billion roughly, uh, their GDP. Ours is about uh, a trillion, over a trillion. But on a federal level, Toronto and the surrounding area represents 20% of Canada's GDP. It's massive. There's nothing like it in the country. So that's why we're calling on the federal government uh, to be a partner, to work with us, as they have in the past, and they've been a great partner. And we just look forward for them to join in, uh, support the City of Toronto, support the, the province in doing that. And as I said in, in our, our, you know, my speech there, that you know when Toronto does well, Ontario does well. When Ontario does well, Canada does well. Uh, you know, we're the engine of, of Canada, uh, Toronto, Ontario. And uh, the Premier, you recently said that the RCMP would have full access to cabinet records as part of the uh, probe into the, uh, the Greenbelt land swap. I'm wondering if full access uh, extends to your personal phone records. You know something, whatever the RCMP uh, requires, we're working with them, as simple as that. But I, I really, you know, <laughs> I really want to focus on this message today. It's the biggest historic funding ever in the history, not in Ontario, but in Canada. And honestly, that, that's what people care about. People care about the number one issue on any poll you see. Number one is affordability. Affordable homes, affordable grocery, affordable uh, gas, that we reduce the, the, the gas uh, tax by 10.7 cents a litre, and we'd love the, the federal government to knock off the 14 cents, uh, 14 and a half cents of the carbon tax. That's what people care about. They care about having a strong economy, working hand in hand with the city of Toronto. That is the driver of Ontario's economy and, you know, for the most part. And uh, they, they want uh, good health care. And we're working diligently on all three aspects. Everything else is at the bottom. Those are the three main things, no matter which way you look at it. Hi, Premier Jack Cowan from the Trillium. Um, as the mayor just said, um, it seems like the province always had the um, authority to do what it wanted on Ontario Place. Isn't this a, a steep price to pay for getting the city out of the way a, a little bit earlier? No, this is more than Ontario Place. Again, I'll repeat, this is more than Ontario Place. Ontario Place is that small, but in saying that, that was a location that was losing millions and millions of dollars every single year. We take a different approach in government. We look at creating more revenues, more opportunities, more tourist attractions, and that, that's what we're doing. And we're going to continue uh, moving forward and always working collaboratively uh, with the city. And as the mayor said about the parking, uh, maybe that's not the best place where we had it. So let's move it. Let's move it over to Exhibition Stadium, have more open space towards the lake. Um, you, know, you know something, folks, I think I've proved over the last five and a half years I will work with anyone, absolutely anyone. And I'm pretty open to making changes and making sure you know everyone's half happy. And uh, we just, <laughs> well, that's it. You know you have a good deal when both sides aren't too happy. If anyone thinks I want the DVP in the garden, no, I don't, but that's our responsibility. There's no bigger infrastructure uh, piece and Toronto can't even handle the infrastructure. And again, I go back to my days at City Hall. That was like an 800 pound gorilla on your back. Uh, yep. Now they're gonna free up that money and they're going to be able to do 
do what people want, and people want affordable housing, attainable housing. They want safe streets, they want safe subways. That's what they want, and this deal is, is making it happen. And you've said before that uh, that it's critical that uh, the feds get involved in this deal. Um, yes. What? But you know, you, you you seem to have worked out uh, quite a deal here between these these uh, two parties. So what's the what's the missing piece? What would you like to see from Ottawa uh, well, to both of you? Okay, so here's another stat. I'm I'm sorry, guys. I'm just a numbers person. But uh, the asylum seekers that are are coming, Toronto's 20% of the population in Ontario. At minimum, at minimum, I don't even believe this number, I think it's higher, but at minimum, 50% of the asylum seekers are here in Toronto. We need funding from the federal government in a big way. I, I go up in the north of Etobicoke and Rexdale, and those hotels, they're packed with asylum seekers that want a better life. That's all they want here, but they have to get their working permit. When I talk to a few, just, just the other day, I pull over, hey guys, how are you doing? Da, da, da. Uh, you know, you have a working permit? No, I don't. We can work. We want to work. So the feds have to step up on that way. They have to step up on, on housing as well. And, you know, when we're buying the new uh, cars, they've been a good partner, by the way, on building that subway. So it's not all gloom and gloom. They've been a really good partner um, on many aspects. But there has never been a time that Toronto needs them and Ontario needs them more than right now. Hi, Premier. Cynthia Mulligan, City News. Hi, Cynthia. So I imagine John Tory right now is saying to himself, why didn't you do this for me when I was the mayor? So why now? Well, funny enough, you know, I, I, I talked to John via uh, text and I, I think the world of John, I really do. We've become friends and uh, at, at his time when we were going through it, we helped him in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, this is a new chapter in Toronto and I, he's in communication with myself and communication with the, the mayor. It's something that you do. There's, there's only been, you know, was Rob was 64, so John was 65, you're 66. 66 other people have run the city, and it's a pretty close-knit group, and you, you, you share the ideas off each other. And uh, I, I respect John, I consider him a friend, and any advice that he gives me, I take it to heart, and he, he's a good man. Uh, Mark McAllister here with the City News follow-up to Cynthia's question. Just curious about the timing of all of this. There is funding for one thing over the course of three years, another that is uh, one-time funding. How quickly does all of this come together and does it help the city's short-term financial difficulties? Well, I, I think so. Immediately we'll take care of uh, all the expenses as we do our due diligence on uh, the DVP and in the gardener, and let's make it very clear, it doesn't matter what the due, due diligence come back, uh, we're, we're taking care of the, the DVP and gardener. So that, I, I believe, is about $350 million uh, right away. That's money going into uh, City Hall's coffers that they're gonna be able to do things. Uh, as, as the mayor, and I'm gonna pass it over to you, mayor, as simple as filling potholes, you know? <laughs> nothing frustrates people more than driving over those potholes blowing in a tire, then they charge the city. But just just things right across the board. So, Mayor, please. Yeah, on the operating side, uh, it's $1.2 billion. And uh, front-end loaded, which means that uh, in uh, the, this coming year, 2024, we will receive uh, $310 million plus the 110 extra to help us out this is the operating and while we are uh, because there's some paperwork that needs to be done on the Garner upload um, the province will provide seven million dollars on the operating uh, of the Garner and DVP and um, 198 million close to 200 million dollar on the capital cost just for the first year uh, so you can see it just really unlocked the potential for the City of Toronto's budget. Um, not uh, to also say that the subway trains is $758 million. And we could go to order those 
uh, subway cars that you keep hearing me talk about on Bloor Street. We need to do it now. That one, uh, we hope the provincial government, sorry, the federal government will come on side immediately. And building housing as of 2024, we will, uh, over the next three years, get 342 million. And the first part of it, it will start the first year allocation, will start in June 2024 which means that uh, we can now plan to build and build a lot more. And do remember that the federal government also have put in some money for housing. Um, so together we can do a lot on building housing. That's uh, the capital over 10 years. If you add in the upload is uh, anywhere from three to five plus billion dollars. Uh, over 10 years capital. So this deal is historic, is huge. It means a big, big, uh, <laughs> big deal, new deal, big deal. It, it, it means um, that we can now have the budget room to uh, deal with some of the urgent problems, whether it's something small like potholes, but it can add up it's, and then it doesn't get very small and continue our investment in public transit and fix TDC because the state of good repair needs um, some of the stations and the signals and all of that needs uh, up, upgrade. <clears throat> also the building of affordable housing and housing uh, together, all of that we can uh, now do. Hi, Alison Jones with the Canadian Press. I'm hoping one or maybe even both of you could elaborate a little bit on what's being comp contemplated with these science centers. The science center is still moving to Ontario Place. You're just looking at some sort of secondary science center for the original location. Yeah, we're we're going to move that to uh, uh, you know to Ontario Place. Many governments have went through the process, wanted to do it, guess they didn't have the political will to do it. We're doing it, but we're going to respect the. The location it's on now because that's that's the city's property by the way people think it's a province it's not it's a city and we, we had a long-term lease on it but we're, we're gonna respect the legacy and we're gonna be there to support Toronto and whatever they want to do there um, it's, there's all sorts of different things from uh, schools and other things but that's that's gonna be up to the city to decide but we'll be there to, to help them any way we can it's a partnership opportunity between the province and the city to um, <clears throat> maintain public community oriented science programming at the existing Ontario place. Sorry, uh, pardon me, at the existing uh, Ontario Science Centre. Yeah. So Premier, you're not still looking at um, building housing on that site anymore? That's up to the city. We'll, we'll be there to support them on whatever they, they want to do. We're not looking at building housing on the uh, Science Centre site. Hi there, Alan Hale from Queen's Park today. Um, so a while ago, Mary Premier Ford, you said you were drawing a line in the sand against developers building, getting building approvals and then not starting construction for months or years. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're, this morning, your housing minister assured building uh, industry stakeholders that your upcoming use it or lose it policy will not be punitive. Can you explain how a policy that you're selling as use it or lose it is not punitive? Well, again, we want to get housing uh, started. A lot of these uh, builders have come forward and asked for uh, an MZO or, or you know, anything. They want to move the housing forward, and all of a sudden they stall. Uh, that's unacceptable. And we just want to get housing built. We're working with all municipalities around the province uh, to work with them, give them the tools to get housing done. Nothing's more of a priority anywhere in this province than building homes of all types. Nonprofit, affordable, attainable, regular homes, and we'll do everything we can. But keep in mind, uh, without these builders, it doesn't happen. Without municipalities, it doesn't happen. Without the provincial support, it doesn't happen. It's about all working together, and let's get these homes built. Like the, the influx of Im immigrants coming to this province is not going to slow down. It's staggering. We're the fastest growing region in North America bar none nowhere no state no region nowhere comes close to the growth we're seeing in ontario uh, we welcome them uh, thank goodness we still have a strong economy uh, we can put these people to work but they need shelter they, they need a home 
But I mean, you have funding tied to these housing starts. Municipalities uh, need, need these companies to start constructing to get your building faster fund money. If you're going to give, if you're not going to take a punitive approach, are people to just assume that they talked you down into watering down, watering down this, uh, this policy? Yeah, what, what these builders need in a lot of regions that can open things up is uh, infrastructure. Again, mm -hmm. uh, we need the federal government, and they've disappeared on this, and hopefully they're going to come back on infrastructure. It's water and sewer uh, that is critical, 100% critical. We need the support. We're going to put the money up. But uh, traditionally, they've always had the ISIP fund and, and you know, the infrastructure fund uh, to help us along. So we need their support. We'll, we'll put our money where our mouth is. And, but we need uh, water treatment, we need the sewer, and we need uh, water in general. Hi, Premier, Mayor Chai, Jeff Gray, Global Mail. Wanted to ask about the Gardner DVP piece. Uh, are there any provisions in the deal uh, that would, uh, say, preclude the, the province from deciding to widen uh, or change the alignment of either of those two highways? Would the province have total control over them, or is there any uh, limits on what the province could do? So for instance, say widening the DVP, for example. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how, you know, I've driven on that DVP, better known as the Don Valley parking lot. Um, <laughs> I've driven on that, and you physically can't widen it. I think there's 11 or 12 bridges. It's just not, it's just not possible, you know, so I uh, guess the answer is no. And it'll be solely paid for by the, by the province? There's no cost-sharing arrangement in that? Just no, okay. it's solely picked the, up the, by the province. On the Science Centre, similarly, uh, yep. is there any cost-sharing? My understanding was that building, which the city owns, uh, the province has said is in, is in disrepair and needs, yeah. needs repairs. So is there any help for the city to, to fix it up, or is that just up to, up to the city? Well, Michael Lindsay, the CEO of Infrastructure Ontario, will, will come out and uh, have some comments about that, uh, I think, this week sometime. So I'll leave it up to the experts uh, at Infrastructure Ontario. The, uh, actually, the Science Centre, the land is owned by the City of Toronto through the uh, Conservation Authority. The Ontario government has a 99-year lease uh, for the Science Centre to operate there. In terms of the actual building, the Science Centre belongs and is operated by the provincial government, not, not by the city, in terms of um, upkeep and programming, it's uh, Ontario government, but because it impacts on a whole lot of people in Toronto, uh, we are going to be partnering to make sure that uh, no one will lose out. That Science Centre will have, uh, will continue its uh, community science-based programming. And um, I would imagine that uh, some new elements um, high-tech elements, whichever element, science element, would then go also go to um, the waterfront. So that we have no say, but it's up to the provincial government. Okay. This will be the last reporter. Okay. Uh, ben Spur from the Toronto Star. Um, to the Premier, um, the, the city's been uh, clear that it, it feels it needs a sustainable source of revenue that grows with the economy to, to meet its, its operating uh, funding needs. On the 1.2 billion that you're pledging uh, over three years, are you committing to uh, providing that level of support in perpetuity, or are we going to be back here in three years needing new new talks for sustainable operating funding? No, we we aren't going to be back in two years. I, I think everyone's worked really really hard, uh, and we're going to continue working side by side with Toronto. As as years go by, new things pop up, and we we look at uh, being a great partner to Toronto and all other municipalities, which we have over the last number of, of years. We're, we're spending over $184 billion on infrastructure, uh, $28 billion on, on uh, roads and building roads, highways and bridges, uh, over $70 billion on transit across the province. The biggest uh, chunk is, is obviously uh, the largest subway expansion in North America. We're, we're building new hospitals and building new schools across the province, so there's never been a, a bigger influx in funding towards infrastructure uh, ever in Ontario than what we're putting forward. But this is all about working collaboratively together. It's been proven over and over and over again. When we work all three levels of government together, it's amazing what we can do. And this is one example of uh, 
two governments uh, working hand in hand, the largest city in the, in the country, working with the largest province in the country. And I just want to, once again, I want to uh, say I'm very grateful, Mayor, for, for our relationship and your, your cooperation. We had a good chat last night. We have some good laughs together, too. Can't always be all serious. And uh, I just I have a soft spot for uh, the mayor. I do. And I don't know if it goes back to a relationship that her late husband, Jack, and Rob had. But we get along very, very well. There's certain things we may not agree on, but we're going to work together on the stuff that we, we can agree on. And I'm just very grateful uh, for, for the mayor's leadership. And as a, as a follow-up to the, to the mayor, uh, as historic as this deal is, as you describe it, uh, it doesn't sound like the operating funding uh, pledged here today is going to meet uh, the $1.5 billion shortfall that the city has just next year. So what's the plan to address the remaining shortfall? Uh, it is an ongoing journey. This is a, it's, okay, <clears throat> it's a good first step. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, we need the federal government to step up, of course, and we'll continue our conversation uh, on um, ongoing um, financial arrangements. I think someone is trying to tell yeah, us so something. so folks at home that are hearing this bell, that, that's a sign that you got to go in, there's a vote happening. But I've actually probably connected it in here to tell the media the press conference is over. So <laughs> it kind of works both ways. But anyways, thanks everyone, very grateful. Thank you.